wouldn't be an afternoon in Florida if we didn't get a little bit of rain, but we're back at VMP Performance. I'm going to take a look at some of their various supercharged cars we have here. We've got an Odin 2650 kit. This thing is uh, un undergoing some testing, I guess we would say. Yeah, the guys have a name for this. Um, this is like the whale snorkel or some, something like that. Mm. But the real one we want to show off is here on this Coyote. Looks like we might have a prototype 3100 out in the wild. Well, that is uh, that is in fact right. <laughs> All right. That is a uh, a set of the earliest 3100 rotors. And it's on a Coyote car, of course. And uh, it looks like you guys have this one instrumented up. And uh, this is a test mule as well, I guess. Yeah, so this car was on our social media a couple days ago for making 1,200 rear wheel horsepower. It's not too bad. Not too bad. Yeah, not it's bad a, at a, all. A great grocery getter, daily driver, go to church on Sunday, then the track shortly thereafter. <laughs> yeah, and it's a convertible, so you'll be taking your chances at the track. Oh, of course. <laughs> Just tell them it runs 12s. It's fine. You got your fire jacket, right? Yeah. But this is something I haven't seen a lot of guys doing when they're testing blowers, though. It looks like you're picking up uh, rotor speed off of the blower pulley. So this is um, really creative. We actually used a Coyote exhaust sensor, exhaust cam sensor, and a uh, Mustang Dyno SmartTac, and we're able to get blower RPM and graph it on our dyno charts. And uh, that's really important because who knows if that belt may slip or not and you can detect that now basically and uh this adjust accordingly i mean simple things like this are really important to development we need to know all the time whether that supercharger is spinning faster or whether the belt's just slipping and how that correlates with boost and then finally horsepower yeah and uh, have you made any significant discoveries with that well you know we've been working with the grip tech technology for about a year and a half now and you know on the race car stuff where it's just got to go fast all the time grip tech's a no-brainer we were able actually to actually prove in certain situations where a non-grip tech pulley slipped and a grip tech pulley did not slip sweet but yeah this is something i know a lot of guys have been waiting for on the earlier coyotes the 3100 for that but this is not the only 3100 we have here is it We've also been testing it on the 5.8 liter GT500 platform. And uh, I hear this one's getting ready to run a number. The uh, goal for this one is to make 1200 rear wheel horsepower. That's not too shabby. Again, go to church on Sunday. It looks great and it looks like you do not have to molest the hood. No, nope, fits under the stock hood. And it looks like you uh, guys are added everything that you've learned throughout the years on creating gt500 superchargers and really put it all into this one uh it's running your you guys bigger throttle body and you got the bigger intake uh plenum size on the back that's um something that we should uh, talk about okay so this actually came up on the forums and um when we launched the gen 3 back in 2017 2018 I thought it'd be a great idea to just have this huge, massive throttle body. I mean, you think so, it, right? Bigger's better, so yeah. why wouldn't you want so that? So this throttle body is 19 square inches, and that's how I now science all this stuff out. Square inches of blade area. Um, this is one of the ones that got blessed with an electric motor that is strong enough to handle a blade that large. You know, everybody talks about throttle body problems, and they say, oh, it's the throttle body, it's the throttle body, it's the throttle body. Well, I'll tell you something really interesting. All the major supercharger companies get their throttle bodies from the same place. And it's a mechanical device. It either has friction, it either has bind. I mean, there's quite a bit of intricacy to a mechanical design, mm -hmm. but there is one thing that is beyond our control, and that is the electronics that we get from the Ford throttle bodies. And that we have to run because where else do you get electronics for a Ford ECU? Yeah from a Ford throttle body. So yeah, so you're basically forced into using the factory Ford stuff on an aftermarket application and uh, making it work essentially for yeah. what you have to So have. what we have done on our more recent line of throttle bodies, 
we've gone back to the stock bolt pattern and we've made the blade a little bit smaller, but also more of a roundish or a roval type shape. And that roval shape is easier for the electronics to open and close because it doesn't have a big flat edge to break. It's got a curved edge. Yeah. And that actually idles, dries, it's easier to tune. Um, this throttle body, the 163R, is 16.3 square inches. And I personally feel from all my experience and testing that that is about the limits of the factory electronics. So what you're talking about, the roval shape being a bit more efficient than a um, than the traditional oval throttle body, which is quite, you know, sort of shaped like that. You got to think of it like uh, when you're a kid and you're going down the road and you had your hand out the window of a car and you do <laughs> yeah. this. That's that that motor is having to push against all that air force wanting to come past yeah. it. So if you've got a more efficient shape, you got less cell area to deal with, and the wind, you know, a weaker motor can turn it easier. And so you know, one of the things that the 3100 is driving us to do, it's driving us to optimize the entire system from the cold air to the throttle body to the intercooler beneath the supercharger. And I can tell you at this point, everyone is at the limit of their intercooler no matter what supercharger they put on top of it. And we are very close to approaching the limit of the 163R throttle body. We are looking at better electronics to drive bigger blades without fail safes. That'll probably be the next big uh, product offering and the next big breakthrough in positive displacement blower solutions yeah but look oh go ahead sorry well one of the neat things i wanted to show everybody in addition to having a blower speed pickup another thing is pressure taps we have them everywhere um, they are of course after the intercooler right before the air goes into the engine you're always going to measure the delivered boost we're also measuring pressure before the intercooler um, right as it comes out of the supercharger at 300 plus degrees and we've also got an inlet pressure sensor to measure vacuum between the throttle body and the rotors. Yeah, and uh, I know this is something you guys have been working on uh, for years, really, since you started selling superchargers, is just optimizing all the work here in the back of the blower and the rotor entry. And I'm guessing the 3100 is the, uh, the magnum opus, as you would say, of that all it, this work you've been doing it needs the 3100 needs a lot of air um it's got to get a lot of air in and it's got to let, get a lot of air out through the intercooler so we're learning a lot um rear inlet superchargers when done properly with a big gradual sweep are actually not too bad um, front inlet superchargers have some additional challenges as far as there's a shaft going through the airstream you've got to make room for that so but front inlet are usually blow up so they have more intercooler surface area so for example odin only has one psi of pressure drop across the intercoolers so that's basically why you see all of your newer blower kits and even the oem stuff is going to the blow up style front inlet just like odin yeah so there's actually two big intercooler cores inside here yeah, this is actually one of your very early uh, Odin kits, isn't it? It looks like it's one of the prototype uh, hats. Yeah, this was a uh, 3D printed sand, and then it was manually cored, um, man manually gated and poured. Yeah, so this is one of the very first kits, and you guys are still keeping it around, doing more testing and development on it. And uh, that just shows you, you know, the evolution of superchargers on these Fords, because, you know, everything used to be the rear inlet style, and uh, now everything has gone to this just because it's more efficient. And you know, if you want to make more power, ultimately you've got to be able to stuff bigger intercooler cores in it, get more air in it. So, and you know, I'm, I'm a sucker for this. I think this is what a supercharger should look like, but there's obviously uh, some it, compromises. It, it's got a really, you know, it's got a really cool traditional look. And like I said, there's some nice benefits to the rear inlet design. It's simple, cost-effective, and flows pretty well when done right. But, um, you know, we also got to move forward for the yeah. DI Coyotes. Uh, correct. And, you know, we try to do a really good balance of both for our customers because yeah. we want to support the customer that's still racing and modifying a 10-year-old car. We've got a lot of these Gen 3R style setups out there. And then there's the future. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, 
always makes me smile when I pop the hood and I can see the big blower like that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that's definitely the future over here. That's the way things are going. And if you want to make progress, uh, maybe you have to give up a little bit on aesthetics, but man, you are picking up a lot of performance. I mean, uh, just uh, the way it's packaged and everything fits with stock hood, even though this one has a hood with a window in it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, just great looking kits all in all. And I know guys are really excited about this, and it's great you have 3100 for coyote, earlier Coyote. You have, of course, for the late model Coyote on the... Uh, the Gen 3 DI Coyote. Yeah, yep, with uh, on the Odin kit. And, of course, going backwards compatible to your older GT500s, the 5.8s, 5.4s. And uh, here shortly, in another video, we're going to take a look at a VMP 3100 base supercharger for the Terminator. So stay tuned for that. Until then, see you guys next time.